Rock handed. Wow, it's not a DBK shirt. Welcome everybody for today's episode. We're gonna tell you why American knives are changing. American made knives. And that, mm, is that a bad thing? Yes and? No. Yes. Oh, yes and yes. No. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today it's a little bit of a podcast style because we have some important things to discuss, to discuss with you. Like the giveaway. We are actually giving away a DBK Bushcrafter knife! Thanks to DBK. We are giving away the TRC Apocalypse with APO finish, thanks to Tools for Gents. We are giving away a Felgenhieven F1 3G Limited Edition, thanks to DBK. We are giving away the Half-Breed Knives LBK01 that we tested, thanks to Half-Breed Blades. The Spyderco Shaman Sprint Run in CPM Rex 45, thanks to Lomnia. A Spyderco Paramilitary 2 crew wear, thanks to Blade HQ. Two BPS knives handmade in the Ukraine, thanks to BPS. And a pair of crooked Kevlar lined gloves that you see us wear in the videos. This video is sponsored by Tools for Jans for the real gentleman. Oh shit, I thought you were gonna drop the hammer. <laughs> so the title is Why American Knives Are Getting Worse. And that is, it sounds like something that is negative, but I actually think that American knives, American made knives are changing. And that is not a negative thing. But it depends but you might on be here, how you view it. You might already be here with an angry face trying to disagree. Well, I but am doing out. my best in the gym and this guy too. It started a few weeks ago when we reviewed the Cold Steel Leatherneck and people were like, no, but that knife is not American made, Mickey! And yeah. the truth is, to be honest, I don't care because the knife did great and the, uh, the net Cold Steel Leatherneck is actually made in Taiwan. Yeah, when? Taiwan. Taiwan. Yeah. But sometimes we get like uh, negative feedback on, yeah, why are you guys doing a review on a Chinese knife or whatever? We Taiwan is not China. Taiwan is not China, Martin. Don't, no, don't no, get no. them angry no, because we're no, going to get back. I'm not saying that. But, you know, and then it's not, we are not telling you to buy it. We are uh, reviewing a knife to see if it is good or not. And we're trying to do that as unbiased as we can. Exactly. Be. And I think there are a lot of, American knife companies who hide behind the name Made in USA. Yeah. Because that Made in USA, for a lot of people, that means it's a good knife. Yeah. But definitely, it isn't always that the case. No. It's even a lot of these American knife companies may be stuck in using these kind of old steels that did well in 1990. Buck. For yeah. instance, Buck, um, well, this was in tw 2019. 85% of their knives were made in the USA and 15% overseas. And that was 5% more made in the USA than the year before. So they are trying to get their production yeah. back to the USA. But do I care if they get that? Do you want to say something? But you got to listen oh, to me. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> do, do I care if they make their knife, knives in the USA? I mean, apart from that, it is good to support your locals. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Not really, because they are not my locals. And if the knives in the USA, USA are not better than the knives that were made overseas, step up your game. Step up your game, yeah. That is my because, controversial opinion. And that's the thing with Buck, because a lot of people ask us, why haven't you reviewed Buck before? And I have had several Buck knives, but they used 420, uh, 428C steel, which is... Which actually was so bad. Suck, suck, that, suck, suck, suck. Yeah, which was actually so bad that I, be, before even reviewing it, I, I, I gave them away or sold them because I couldn't believe that this was actually happening. It was, it was that bad. But, but also, we are not here to absolutely bash knives. No, no, so no, that's no, also no, the no. reason that we but didn't I think review Buck. Buck is a, a good uh, example of a brand who has kind of st uh, stuck in the past because of, they, they just run forth upon their good name, you know? They had a good name and they kept selling knives because they have a good name and not necessarily good knives. We're gonna get so much hate. I'm suddenly realizing but now. Buck, yeah, Buck, Buck makes really sturdy knives. But they cost but, a buck. The <laughs> but That's funny, isn't it? They are kind of behind in terms of the steels they use. Technology, technology has much, advanced yeah. and everything. And their grinds, uh, I've seen their grinds. No. 
Not so uh, basically, you made Buck our public enemy number one <laughs> at, the, at this point. No, so but that's the, that is one of the reasons why you haven't seen us cover Buck because but maybe I wanted to review Buck, and now you absolutely ruined it for us. Buck, if you are watching, I am still open to change yeah. my mind. Prove us wrong. But no, hey, Martin is a big hater. I'm, I'm a little bit shocked. I'm, I'm a little bit afraid <laughs> of you. Well, anyway, I also looked up a few other brands. I mean, I'm not gonna cover all American brands like Tops, SC, Benchmade, Bug, Spartaco, and Gerber. Yeah, um, ooh, a lot of great brands also in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Gerber. Uh, I don't know when this was written, but on the internet, I found that around 22% of their products were made in USA. Yeah. So that means that 78% is yeah. made in China. You could, you could actually, why have I got this in my hand? You could actually make the argument that, Martin, please, can you stop spitting? We're making a YouTube video. Yeah, there was some uh, old bapau in my mouth. That probably get a lot of people angry, but if people like Gerber knives, is it that bad? I don't know. <laughs> Benchmade actually makes all their knives in America, as far as, yeah. I, could, uh, as, as I could see. Spyderco has got a Chinese line. Yeah, which they especially market as their like their more budget friendly line made in China. So Yeah, so that's great. I mean and the rest of, of the knives are made in America. Um, Tops knives. Tops knives. 100 percent America, I think. But Tops knives, I would say also time to step up their steel, even though their steel is amazing. The 1095 that they use is really great. Why are you watching at your Martin? Technology is... Uh, Hello! We are yeah. making a video! SC knives yeah. are also falling behind, in my opinion, with the steels that yeah. they use. So they, in, they, they, now try, they are now trying like to go also into the super steels, but then they are stuck with S35VN. And I see that with Buck as well. They, when they go to a super steel, it's S35VN. And a lot of and these... Do you think that is actually bad? I think it's picking the safest option for a... Super steel, but S35VN is one of the oldest super steels that you can get. Get LMAX, get M390, get something but, more exciting. But wait, wait, ho, ho. I mean, CPM3V is also a pretty old super steel. And yeah, but that was brilliant. It, but I still love that steel. But S35VN, S35V? What, what if people also think that S35VN is maybe just as good as CPM3V, in but, their opinion? It, yeah, but they have wrong opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Mar I'm sorry guys, Martin's being very aggressive today. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm at this table with this monster. Well, you know, we're losing all our viewers. Yeah. I have to keep them, uh, I have to keep this friendly attitude with them. Guys, Americans, if you're watching, I still love you. I still love you. I love your money. <laughs> you have to remember, we are Dutchmen and we are very greedy. Yeah? No, just kidding, America. You but know you, I but love you. I mean, you like tops, don't you? I love tops, and, and tops is one of these like examples of a, a very rare species of. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's like, no, tops is oh, no. sorry guys. Oh, no. no, but tops is like this. This kind of it's strange because tops uses a very old steel, 1095, yeah. a kind of a basic steel which is pretty cost effective to use. But this this is a brand who has really is on top of that heat treatment, yo, you know. These guys, they, they heat, heat treat 1095 to, to like the best potential it has. Yeah. And, and it, that makes the 1095 uh, Tops knife worth that kind of high price. Okay, so you would I say think. they don't need to change steels? No, I say Tops, they have mastered the 1095. It's, it's it what suits them. It's like almost like with Extrema Ratio from I Italy. That they use N690, which is kind of a basic steel, but yeah. it performs amazingly. Yeah, yeah. And SC, do you think they should change? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I yeah. mean, we have a, we have a very good relationship with yeah, SC, yeah. and we don't have a good relationship somehow with their viewers. I mean, yeah. uh, the viewers or, hate us, <laughs> or, or, or their customers. But, but we very much we like SC, and yeah, we like that attitude because they like their knives to be used, and they have got this yeah. good warranty. But, but we just don't like. But it's SE not with, our style. With SE, it's just like they have a different view on where their why their knives should be soft, opposed to us. Because for us, a survival situation in the next three days, you want the knife to take care of you. You don't have to sharpen it. But SE's view on that is, you always want to be able to sharpen your knife in the field with the things that you find around you. And 
it's something that I don't always stand behind, but it's, it's their opinion and there are enough customers or people who also have that view. So for those customers, it's a great product. Yeah. And I know, you know, it's an indestructible, they have good warranty. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm not going to say anything about the price, but... Yeah, and who, who do you want to take survival advice from? From SC? Eh? Guys who are in the field, actually, or a guy with a Fred Perry shirt on? <laughs> Huh? Yeah, the, you, these you, guys. You make that decision. The guys from SE are always doing search and rescue. Every time I am talking with these guys, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm kind of busy. I'm in the middle of a search and rescue right now. Always. But that also brings me to the next point. Because all these American brands, if they are made abroad or not, are approachable. Yeah. And that's why we like them. Yep. Because even though I don't really care, I just want their knives to be good. And if it's USA made, I like it. If it is actually outsourcing materials uh, like Cold Steel does with their sheaths, I think, or k does with their sheaths, and yep. Cold Steel does with some of their knives. If it's good, it is good. Exactly. And, and it's also fun that it has this, you know, this USA uh, branding. I don't mind that, you know. But um, Cold Steel is now purchased and SOG is purchased by what was the name again GSM outdoors. outdoors yeah and since they've done that we cannot for instance get into contact with SOG we can get into contact but they don't want to well, what was yeah, the story so, again so they don't want to send us stuff yeah with cold steel I still have the luck that we have like the European distributor for it who yeah. sends us stuff but SOG they replied to us I, I wanted to review like a hatchet from them yeah. And they replied, yeah, we have like our select group of YouTubers that we send stuff. So we don't, basically, we don't need you guys. Okay. But yeah. that, that's okay. I take that answer. But it's kind of dangerous because if you have a select group of YouTubers, yeah. are you going to get an unbiased opinion? That's the question. I mean, uh, we did it on a very small scale. We had our DBK knife. I mean, we do, we do not need... At this point, other YouTubers to review our knives to sell our DBK knives. And thank you all very much for that because we are very thankful that yeah. you like them. So, but even though people are buying the knife, we really felt uh, obligated to send it to Joe X, which is yeah, a YouTuber yeah. who absolutely destroys every knife. Yeah. Just for the people who want to see uh, like the honest potential of that knife, that yeah, they, they can see the, it. The with, absolute maximum it can take. Yeah, with yeah. somebody who is unbiased. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I really, I really love that and I'm very happy how that performed. And <laughs> I think we are very lucky how that performed. But I also think that every brand should actually do that. And if you don't do it like SOG does now, I think, like what you said, you, you do have the risk that you get biased reviews. Yeah. And that is also happening with, and now we are going to get very, very controversial. Oh. Bark River. Ooh. Ouch. And I Ouch. mean, if for us there was one company that was at the very tip of the top, the pinnacle of knife making, I yeah. would say that was Bark River. Bark River. It was always Actually, Falcon Even and Bark River yeah, were for us, our two. two main brands. And, and let me say, because if Bar River knives are good, they they still would have the potential. They still have the potential to be one of my favorite brands overall because I really love the concept of having these semi-custom knives. You know, well heat treated. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I just want to speak factually now. Yeah. Yeah. The contact, uh, the contact, our contact with Mike Stewart yeah. has been terrible because Mike Stewart doesn't want to hear any any critique so he absolutely if you go to his forum and he says something negative he's gonna either block the thread he's gonna f delete your comments he's gonna make sure that the the negative sounds will be silenced i mean yep. his son jim stewart however yeah I'll i like the geezer yeah he's <laughs> the geezer. <laughs> <laughs> no but he yeah, but i mean you know, I not everybody there is but i would say that in my opinion, he has done stuff, and we're not gonna openly, you know, call him out. But he yeah. has done but stuff that we don't it's like. It's just, it's just that, uh, as a knife maker, don't let your pride get in the way of good feedback. And we think that that has uh, happened a little bit. Yeah. And the fact that you guys watching have sent us so much negative feedback, we haven't seen that in years. Yeah. Um, and. 
that is something that you cannot deny that we see that in our comment section so you know it, it's also not that when we reviewed the latest bark river yeah it broke and if it's because of us i don't i don't know but we sent it back to bark river and do you have that knife back yet no nope. how long has it been since you sent that knife one year and two months i think now one year and two months you sent two other knives. How long did it take for you to get those knives uh, back? Uh, one and a half year. One and a half years. And that was one knife. One knife. And that was not just waiting and then one and a half years later getting that knife. No, that was constantly asking, asking for, for it. it. Yeah. So that is that is not good customer service. So I would say that sadly that company in my eyes at this moment has taken a turn for the for the worse yeah. uh, and, a little bit. So I really hope that they fix that. Yeah. And 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 again because. The last time that I gave criticism like this, it didn't end up well, you know, it di wasn't taken well. No. And I just hope that because whatever our relation with, with the owner, I love the Bark River concept and I want it to be, I want it to be the best. Me too, because I'm still a fan of the looks, I'm still a fan of the idea, I'm still a fan of everything, the steels, yeah. they have the potential to be the perfect knife maker. Yeah. It is just that somehow people are receiving knives that just are not that... Uh, Shouldn't have passed the quality control. Yeah, and yeah. we just... We, we've, Mart has bought knives himself without them knowing that Martin was Martin. Yeah. And they, the quality has just gone, yeah. gone backwards. And we absolutely... We're very sad. We're very sad about that because yeah. our favorite knives up to this day, son! are still Bark River knives. Exactly, my number one knife is the Bark River Aurora. My number one knife is the Gunny Scandi CPM 3V. And for the people who are getting angry at us now, I mean, it is up to you if you get angry at us. I don't, I don't mind if you get angry. I mean, for the people who are getting angry right now, I think we might be a contender for the channel who has sold the most, uh, or had done, yeah, yeah has sold the most Bark River, or has at least made so, the best, you so know, I think commercial. we have we have we have the right to also say some negative feedback because we if have it said so, so and much positive and it's not even things. our right it's it's our obligation to do so because you guys deserve that because we have given a lot of praise to Bark River and if we see something negative then if you guys receive a knife with some negative points you say you think hey but uh, uh, DBK was all positive about it how does this happen yeah anyway. If we are wrong about Bug River, please uh, say it in the comments and tell us what your experience is with Bug River because we would love to know it. Yeah. Because maybe it has changed for the for the better already, and we are. Um, maybe we are still behind. Yeah. yeah. So please tell us, and maybe we are wrong, and then uh, we will apologize for that. Anyway, to top it all off, the knife industry is also about making money. Also. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a big risk in that, and Mart is now going to tell you that risk, like with the GSM outdoors yeah, buying because, Cold you know, Steel and SOG. Let me start with saying, besides the lack of contact with these brands now, I haven't seen like a really negative impact on the brands yet, yeah. yet. But the risk of this is that these giant investing companies buy a lot of these brands, and their aim is to make as much revenue as possible. Uh, and you know, with with like the owner of Cold Steel, the previous owner of Cold Steel, this guy was. I thought his advertisements were very funny, but yeah. this was a guy who had a passion for knives and a passion for what he did. Yeah. And somebody with, with a passion wants to deliver a quality product and wants to deliver a, a product a, a, a quality product more than making a lot of revenue. But with these companies, the quality is not necessarily like the first most important thing. No, no, no. The revenue is the most important yeah. thing. And that is, that is a big risk. For the people hating on the guy selling cold steel, don't do that because it is his money and his life. And he you only have one life and you don't live to work, you work to live. Yeah. Roger that. <laughs> and then one more thing, what I'm seeing more and more and more, is a lot of these kind of there are there are a lot of new small knife brands popping up in the United States. Yeah, and these are mostly, from what I've seen, 
These are small knife brands who design knives yeah. and let them be made in China or Taiwan or okay. whatever. Okay. But they market themselves as American brands. Yeah. But often all the knives are outsourced. Yeah. Like whatever, a Civivi. Maybe there are even good knives. Like, I mean, I like Civivi yeah, for folders, but they are not American knives. But they kind of market themselves as like these American brands. And that's kind of, you know, it's not illegal. No. But it's kind of deceptive. Yeah. Don't be deceived by the words made in the USA. Yeah. Judge a knife on how good it is. Yeah. And not where it is made. And I, of course, get it. I would also love all the stuff to be, you know, made not in China. I would like that. But we're working in Europe now as well to kind of produce more within Europe. Yeah. We, as, a, as, as DBK as well, I try with the uh, webshop products, I try to, to keep it as much in Europe as possible. Can, can I also say some positive things? Because I kind of feel like we're leaving on a little bit of a negative note. There are some really good things coming from America recently as well. Like CP and Magna Cut, it, like, it took the world by surprise. Lauren Thomas, a knife guy who just designed this steel on paper in his head. I don't know what he did, but he created one of the, the most popular and one of the best steels that we have tested. Yeah. And that is, that is amazing. That's made by Crucible uh, from, in the United States. Spyderco, a, a brand that, that you know, isn't afraid of experimenting with a lot of these, yeah, these different yeah, steels yeah, yeah, and, and really also um, connecting with the knife community to make these heat treatments as good as possible, like with, uh, with Sean from uh, Triple B Handmade. Some of the best things are not made in the USA, like some steels or whatever. So it is not bad to experiment with some stuff that come from other countries. I mean. That is okay. Experiment a little bit with uh, Bowler Udelholm, which is a great steel company in, in, in Europe. I mean, Elmex, uh, you know, all these vendors for extra, they it make amazing steels. So, the, so, to come back on that one sentence, American knives are changing, is that bad? In our opinion, that is not bad. Per se. I like it! Oh. Oh. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Did, don't you agree? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. But just don't let like the popularity of, of your brand take over the control. I like uh, financially. Financially, yeah. You know, make let the quality it, control win. Yeah, yeah. Let the let the quality control <gasps> bring the, the quality back to control. Oh, I'm out of let here. Let the this. quality control the quantity. Don't let the 